Hello and welcome to State of Decay 2. We're currently playing through Lethal Zone with not just terrible characters, but terrible people. Probably the worst of the lot is Fiddler, christened Mo Lester. Currently, we have three members of How the Bloody Hell Are These Lots Still Alive, Fiddler, Hunty Boy, and Lara. The latest member to the team who's both lazy and a hypochondriac. This is the penultimate episode to the series, so if you want my next video to be the finale, I'll make the same deal as previously, 500 likes in the first 24 hours, and I'll get it done ASAP. I'll also leave links to the first two episodes in the description if you want to check out the story so far, but for now, let's just crack on. And the first thing on today's to-do list is to check out a new enclave to see if they have any negative Nellies on their team. Apparently, they found a huge stash of weapons or something, so let's hope they're overcompensating by having teeny weenies. But unfortunately, they are not. In fact, these might be some of the most overpowered sons of bitches I've ever met. For example, Lou here is not just a fantastic cook, she has the stamina to go all night, and she's also great with an assault rifle. I decide to leave immediately before I fall in love with an NPC. Instead, I head north bound towards Mount Tanner to attack more play cards. The first of which being in the visitor center. While I'm risking life and limb to end the blood plague for every individual in this town, Mickey Wilkinson is having a bitch about me being a foreigner or something on the radio. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, Mickey, get your priorities straight, man. Also, we complete the first phase of the play card. I await for the smoke to disappear, then pop a smoke bomb and complete the second phase. Although it seems something was hiding from me in the smoke. Oh shit, feral! Holy shit! See, that's how good smoke is, chat. I didn't even know there was a bloody feral on my ass. I also wasn't fast enough to escape the gas cloud, so our terrible stamina is now even worse. I then proceed to waste about a fifth of America's military budget trying to take down one bloody crackhead. Gunslinger is without a doubt the trait that I miss most about this playthrough. And from here, a couple more hits ends the play card. And considering how out of control the local population is and how terrible my stamina is, I decide I'll do the looting later. And for now, we continue northbound up Mount Tanner and introduce ourselves to the mad scientists. You'll be glad to know Mickey has stopped rambling on about the government turning in the frogs gay, and instead his compatriots have asked for my assistance and helped them get some expensive computer part from down south. I agreed to help them out as I'll need the influence to recruit and claim a new base. Mickey has decided to come along for the ride to keep an eye on me, and understandably doesn't want to be sat too close to a bloke named Mo Lester, so sits in the back. But before we go looting for strangers, it's time to go looting for myself, starting with the play cart that I've just taken out. I proceed to claim the visitor centre as an ammo outpost, then loot its entirety as well as the ammo shop next door. But while I'm doing runs back and forth the gun shop and my outpost someone gets mean in chat. For real, what is that hiccup? Bastards. Ah yes, when trying to deny the existence of something terrible, just cover it up. Can't believe I'm taking more advice from the Tory party manifesto. Anyway, with the area fully looted and my car fully refueled, it's time to crack on with the mission at hand. And believe it or not, terrible driver isn't even one of my negative traits. We then arrive at the industrial steel place with no further issues, and my decrepit ass stands on the car and lets Mickey do all of the hard work. Atta boy Mickey, you so fine, some might say you blow my mind. Then once I spot my gap, I can limp on in, and collect ourselves the Cleo memory core. I then hop in the car, Mickey hops into the back, and I drive down the road a bit, making sure to pull over safely to allow the traffic to pass. I give him the doohickey, and he gives me some special firebombs, and then I let him walk the nearly 2,000 meters back to Mount Tana. Cardio is the most important rule of Zombieland. Fiddler then decides he's gotta pay a visit to his Aunt Gloria's house, as she was a massive hoarder or something. But all he finds is pain and bloody notes. So with that disappointment, we make our way back home, where we take over as our leader, Hunty Boy. And after quickly topping up our resources, we can make our way back towards Mount Tanner to finally finish off the blood plague in that area. But on the way there, we run into a familiar face. Oh, look, it's Mickey! That's so funny. Oh, look, we're smoking again. Well, I guess that's my fault for running down his fat ass. I then arrive at the site of the next play cart, which is in this little warehouse. And high as a kite, we charge on in and start smacking this strange sack of meat with my heavy weapon. Unfortunately, the neighbours aren't too pleased with me trying to increase the property value, so I'm forced to burn them all down. And this tactic is also how the Targaryens resolve literally any kind of conflict. The heart completes its first phase for my flames, then a knock of the door draws me over. Oh god, I was not expecting him to be there, I'll be honest with you. I can shoot the crackhead through the window while I'm stood safely on the car. I then charge back in, swinging it about like every bloke who's just discovered the helicopter. Unfortunately, this results in a slightly damaged appendage, which goes to show, lads, don't be reckless. But even with my wonky beaver cleaver, I complete the second phase. I then do what I do best, keeping firefighters in a job. Unfortunately, however, crackheads are obviously flameproof, and when your health is already as low as it is, ferals tend to make it even lower. Gratefully, Hunty Boy is a 
massive pellet so can recover before taking it down. And with the speedy boy taken care of, I can run back in and finish off the... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's my bad. That's my bad. Got cocky. All right, well, ignoring that setback, I inject some experimental medicine and then take down the play card. After a tactical retreat to draw out all of the deadheads, I run back in and collect all of the loot. But I figure there's got to be at least one more play card in this area, so I'll make my way over to investigate. And on my way, it's time for animal fact number eight. Did you know the most deadly animal in the world isn't actually something cool like a tiger or bear? It's actually the little tiny mosquito. But you should use this as motivation for yourselves because no matter how small and pathetic you are, you too can cause a substantial amount of pain and suffering to hundreds of thousands. Pain and suffering to thousands, you say? Well, that reminds me to ask you all to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. With the car parked strategically, I go for a little jog, and even though I take an absolute battering in the process, I do manage to complete the first phase of the play card. Unfortunately, however, Project Scorched Earth almost ends disastrously. That was not good. That was not good. No, 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 no. Gratefully, we don't succumb to third degree burns, however, I I think it might be time to use the medikit we found in the last play card. Ah, much better, I'm sure you'll agree. I eliminate another crackhead, then run back in and surprisingly take the heart down with one more hit of my heavy weapon. I guess we must have completed the second phase with Mickey's special firebombs. But hey, whatever, that's taken care of, it's time to get out of here. But it'd be fair to say that does not go very well at all. Oh, yep, yeah, that was definitely a mistake. Thankfully, I'm not too far away from the outpost I claimed earlier. However, it is probably a good idea to avoid a car that's about to explode. Gratefully, I got a few energy drink so that should get me to the outpost where I know I've got at least a toolkit or two. I just gotta avoid any ferals en route. I've also used the radio command to call in some new survivors as every time I've done this so far I've been able to find at least one member with negative traits and I want one other player so I can move bases. Also having an enclave that close to my outpost I'll be able to ship off any unnecessary shite to max out my potential influence. So I head over there to make some introductions. Once the pleasantries are exchanged I pinch myself a toolkit and check out their stats and instantly we have ourselves a winner. Nature has less than 100 maximum stamina, which means he's hiding a negative trait behind all these question marks. He's also a musician, which means his only survival skills are rolling joints and sleeping with underaged girls. But before I recruit him, I spend 10 minutes running back and forth my outpost to sell them a load of shite so I can gain all of their influence before they disband. But with all that tedious out of the way, welcome to the team, Nate. And after stream chat vote on an additional negative trait to add using the community editor, this is how our new boy is looking. To start, he's always cold, which isn't great for stamina. He's also only got one lung, which is... I'm sure you can agree, also not great for stamina. But without a doubt, the worst trait this man has, he lived amongst celebrities. What a despicable little bastard. And with that, I send him on his merry way back to base. I'm sure he won't be eviscerated by a pack of blood ferals or something. A plague bloater then tries to play peekaboo. Oh, shit in hell. Then a plague feral decides he wants to have a piece of my doomed ass. But I reject his approach, even though he's very persistent. Enjoy some of this buckshot, you prick. As I finally get back to my pickup, a new curveball spawns, which could become a problem. High temperature zombies. Basically, zombies in a certain area are gonna be much more infectious, but they'll drop more plague samples as a result. Not exactly what I need right now, but as long as I avoid the area they're in, I should be okay. I then decide to take the scenic back route towards Spencer's Mill. And while we do that, it's time for animal fact number nine. Did you know the common garden snail has over 14,000 teeth? Which means they're the best equipped animal for dealing with a meth addiction. I then turn Pterodactyl Park into my home. I then start cleaning clearing up some grisly remains and start building an infirmary. But well, that's it, as we're now out of labour. I can then take over as our newbie Nate, who has the lowest stamina I've ever seen. But that's certainly no excuse, he's still gotta prove himself worthy of the cult. I mean, the group of friends, nothing more sinister. And he has been tasked with clearing out our mortal enemies, the grocery raiders. And I know what you're thinking, are they really your mortal enemy if you've never had a conversation with them? Shut up and stop pointing out my hypocrisies, alright? Using the abandoned car as cover, I move in, but they've gathered in a group next to the door, and the fact it's made of glass might fool you into thinking you can shoot right through it. You cannot. You see, doors in this game were crafted by the gods themselves. They may be opened or closed, you can see right through, but no bullet shall pass. So I'm forced to change position and shoot the bastards through the window. With one downed, I either manage to take the other two down with one bullet, and with them all crying on the floor, it's just a case of me pulling off the triple double tap. You know what? I might save the ammo and let the zombies kill this guy. Okay, well, maybe it's just the double double tap, but that was arguably a moronic decision. 
decision. You see, I managed to fight off that zombie, but my health is really not looking good. And I was stupid enough not to bring any healables with me. Not even a smidge of morphine for the good times. And to make things even worse, the zombies don't even kill the final guy. They just sort of stand there laughing at the bloke as he cries onto the floor of that tartan mart. So with his screams of agony begging for death, I graciously put him down. My single-lunged boy then limps back to base, and once he's healed his chronic injuries, we head back out to complete phase two of his initiation. He now has to take down a play cart. But unfortunately, this is where everything goes horribly wrong. I find the next heart in this little house behind Jurassic Junction. And with a strategic park because of our unfit lad, we run on in. With copious amounts of caffeine running through my veins, I charge in and batter the thing with my shovel. I actually manage to complete the first phase. And before I dip, I drop a fuel bomb to hopefully thin out the hordes a smidge. This actually works out perfectly as I can circle around the house and complete the second phase in record time. I once again burn it for that residual damage, then head back to the roof of the car where I plan to finish it with the gun. This act would unfortunately be Nate's downfall. Although I am able to finish off the play cart, that loud gunfire has attracted a nearby wandering horde consisting of a feral and a juggernaut. Well, it's fair to say that's not great, it's time to get out of here. But with the car in that position and so close to the juggernaut, it would be suicide to try and drive to safety. First, I need to lure the hordes away. I managed to slow the pursuers with a molly and take down the feral. Where's the jug? You better not be taking anything out on my car. He's taking it out on my car. You better hope there's a toolkit in here to make, make do for it, because otherwise, there's not. With the car destroyed and no way to repair it, things are certainly looking bleak. But gratefully, the one thing I do have plenty of is stimulants to keep this one-lunged man going. I even climbed the nearby billboard to hopefully try to scout out the car from there. But I was not successful. So it seems Nate, the one-lunged man, has a choice. He can run back home with his tail between his legs and look like a proper bellend for losing our only vehicle. Or he can take down a second nearby play cart and hope that husk has a toolkit inside. I think you know where this is going. I sprint over to plague territory as fast as my one lunged legs can carry me, and I burst through the door with only minimal earth the undead inside. I can then wedge myself deep into the corner and swing my shovel around like a madman. This keeps the undead off me while also delivering damage to the play cart every other swing. We complete phase one with this tactic, I then throw myself out the window and drop a pipe bomb. I also toss a molly to try and thin out the hordes that are chasing me. But when my stimulant's still active, this isn't time to rest. So I head back in and start swinging, that is until a feral rocks up. At that point it's time to run as fast as my one lunged ass will carry me. I managed to take it out from the roof of an abandoned car, but without gunslinger that used up a serious amount of ammo. I complete phase 2 with a couple more hits and then drop a frag grenade behind me. That did a great job of crippling all the Zeds inside and believe it or not, one more swing ends the play cart. But now is no time to run. The whole reason we've taken this down is to loot it and hopefully find a toolkit. Unfortunately the game won't let me open up the husk with this many knobheads around me. So I've got to lure them all outside before I can run back in and check the loot. And you'll never guess what we find in that play cart, baby. Yeah. Fuck all. Okay, so yes, we might have failed in bringing home a working vehicle. But Nate did take down two hearts, and he has a sack of ammo supplies to take home as a prize. Yes, I do realise I've decided to run quite heavy. It's kind of how I do things. All Nate needs to do now is get back home to safety. If a feral spawns, I'll be honest, it might be lights out. Don't worry, it's only 400 more metres. Nate can make it. Damn, that thing's fast. Yeah, of course I was gonna jinx it, but not just one. A triple pack of bastards want to feast on my final lung. Well, you ain't having it, you crack-headed fuckers. Well, if you want it, you're gonna have to prize it out of my cold, dead chest. I use my final molly, which managed to slow down two, and that gives me the time and space needed to headshot the third. But now his brothers are coming to seek revenge. My shots unfortunately miss, and I dodge forward, avoiding his charge. His first charge, that is, the second I wasn't quick enough. And that is, without a doubt, one of the most brutal and quickest deaths I've ever experienced. And the bar Bastards responsible didn't even finish their meal. Can I get an RIP in the comment section for Nate? While his life was short, his spirit most certainly was not. We then take over as Fiddler was managed to decipher his aunt's prepper plans. And gratefully, that location is under 300 metres away. Very handy as we now have no car. What's also really handy is our prize being a new vehicle. Isn't it funny how things work out? Unfortunately, however, Fiddler's decrepit arse isn't capable of handling these hordes. Especially as Nate had taken our last supply of stimulants. So with snacks being my only supply of stamina, it's time to retreat. But it's a tactical retreat, and once again bringing these hordes to the aimless wanderers. They helped me out previously, I'm sure they wouldn't mind doing it 
again. From the first floor, I watch the bloodshed unravel. Zombie after zombie pile through the doors, and the aimless wanderers hold them back with all of their might. I then get bored and yeet myself off the balcony, and Fiddler barely even rolled an ankle. I then decide I'm going to need a toolkit from the auto shop across the road to get Aunt Gloria's car up and running. But it's fair to say that did not go to plan. So here we are, once again leading a horde back towards the aimless wanderers. Hey, aimless wanderers, my neutral buddies, how you doing? Uh, where the bloody hell are you? Gratefully, they haven't moved out of town. However, this time the fight leaves Fiddler with a considerable amount of damage. And while he didn't know it at the time, those injuries would later go on to save his life. With those hordes dealt with, he heads back to the auto shop and grabs the toolkit. And from there, he can fix up Aunt Gloria's vagabond and drive it back to base. But with him already have taken damage, I decide he needs a rest and take over as Lara. And Lara's quest is to collect all the goodies from Nate's rotten corpse. And thankfully, that should be pretty simple, seeing as the blood ferals have wandered off somewhere. But sadly, this is where tragedy must strike in quick succession. Oh, bloaters, 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 bloaters. Avoid them, please. Oh, no, 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 no. Bloater gunk fills her lungs as she becomes infected. Two more bloaters pop right next to her and her health tanks hard. You have got to be fucking kidding me. No, 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 no. <laughs> Poor Lara, she deserved so much better than that. R.I.P. Queen, I hope you rest well in eternal darkness. But it's fair to say that certainly leaves us in a perilous situation. Eleven play carts remain, and with only two severely damaged boys remaining, is it even possible to pull it back from this situation? I guess we'll find out in the final episode of this series. 500 likes and we'll get it done by the end of the week.